Hey everyone, today I want to talk about one of my favorite sharks. For those of you who are familiar with the Great White, you'll probably recognize this shark. Hold up, is that what I think it is? <gasps> I'm gonna need a bigger boat. Oh wait, never mind. Aw, it's just a baby. And it's chonky, like me. How cute. I didn't even know Great Whites made it this far up north. They don't. This isn't a Great White. This little guy is called a salmon shark. Silly napkin. Salmon are fish, not shark. And what eats a salmon? Bears? And... People? Keep going. You're just waiting for me to say salmon. Bingo! As you probably already guessed, the salmon shark gets its name from its love of salmon. Which, if you think about it, makes a lot of sense. After all, tiger sharks eat tigers, whale sharks feed on whales, and the great white is known for its pearly white skin. I have to say, it's nice to finally have some consistency with all these names. All joking aside, the name salmon shark is fitting. Just like your favorite orange monster, they love to eat salmon. In fact, in 1998, Alaska Fish and Game stated that salmon sharks managed to consume 25% of the total salmon population during their annual run through Alaska. Oh wow, that's a lot of salmon. Hmm, should I be worried about the declining fish populations? Why yes, you should. But don't worry, our friends here only eat their fair share. The salmon shark is famous among the Alaskan coastline, which might make some of you think this animal is something of a local hero. However, if we look at their migration patterns, we can see that their habitat encompasses much of the northern Pacific. From California to Japan, salmon sharks are found everywhere. And yet, the lack of respect they show my friend here. We've seen hundreds of hours of great whites leaping out of the water, only to narrowly miss the plastic seal they're chasing. But when a salmon shark does it, crickets. This shark deserves more attention, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. The salmon shark is a highly specialized predator that, thanks to its built-in AC system, is able to adapt to environments not suitable for any other shark. And I mean, come on, let's be honest, it looks adorable. How do you not love looking at this little guy? I think more people need to get to know the great white smaller cousin. So today, we're taking a look at the salmon shark and discovering what makes them such an incredible animal. Don't forget to hit that like button, and let's dive into this. Okay, so what makes the salmon shark one of my favorite sharks? I have already talked about its physical appearance, and I would be lying if I said that didn't play a big role in what I love about this animal. I mean, it looks like a small great white, but it's also short and plump like me. What's not to love? But let's zoom out a bit and take a look at where we are. This is the Alaskan frontier, and it's absolutely beautiful. Just look at those towering snow-capped mountains in the distance covered in a blanket of large evergreen trees. It's the perfect backdrop for this beautiful shoreline where nature remains untouched. It's also freezing out here! Remind me the next time I make a video on sharks to pick one that lives in a warmer climate. Maybe somewhere where I can enjoy a nice fruity drink and bask in the sun. Wake up! Oh, sorry, I was daydreaming a bit there. As I was saying, it's cold out here, which makes survivals for most animals very difficult. This is especially true for sharks, who tend to prefer warmer waters. The number of arctic sharks is few and far between. The most famous arctic shark is probably the Greenland shark. These large, slow-moving giants are thought to have the longest lifespan of any living shark. Actually, that's not really giving them enough credit. The Greenland shark not only holds the title for longest lifespan of any living shark, but they also have the longest life expectancy of any vertebrae, period. Unfortunately, thanks to its shy nature and remote habitat, this animal is a bit challenging to study, but scientists believe the Greenland shark can live up to 500 years. How? I'm sorry? How do scientists know that? Easy! They just count the candles on its birthday cake. Oh wow, that's so much easier than tagging multiple species over the course of several decades and using radiocarbon dating to determine the animal's age within a specific parameter. Can you imagine if we actually had to go through all that work just to verify this stuff? Now, one of the first things you'll notice about the Greenland shark is that it's huge. How did it sneak up on me like that? It came out of nowhere. Wow, maybe they really could sneak up on large prey. Anyways, their large bodies played a crucial role in their survival. As mentioned earlier, this is a frigid environment, and all that extra mass helps insulate them from the cold temperatures. However, the Greenland shark isn't just big, it's also slow. I mean, just look at this thing. Let's get a move on, slowpoke! These animals move at a sluggish pace of around 1.5 kilometers per hour, or roughly one mile per hour for those of us not on the metric system. For reference, that's about a third of the speed of how fast you humans typically walk. But wait a second, why are we talking about the Greenland shark? This video is supposed to be about the salmon shark. Why am I going off on this tangent? Well, survival in cold waters isn't exactly common for sharks. In order to pull it off, the Greenland shark has to go to extreme measures that work really well for an animal that scavenges the murky depths. But these babies are hunting salmon. That whole slow and steady lifestyle doesn't really work when your favorite food source is a born sprinter. In order to keep up, the salmon sharks need to be fast and agile. They need to be able to generate a lot of energy, which also means they need a high metabolism. For cold-blooded animals, this presents a real problem. Hold on there, napkin. Let me stop you right there. 
I watch Shark Week, and I happen to know that some sharks, such as the Great White, are endothermic. This means that similar to warm-blooded mammals, they can maintain their body temperature higher than that of their surrounding environment. If the salmon shark is a cousin to the Great White, it's probably also endothermic. And if that's the case, cold water shouldn't be much of a problem since it's able to maintain a body temperature higher than the surrounding water. Okay, Mr. Smarty Pants, you're warm-blooded. Go ahead and hop into the freezing waters of the North Pacific and tell me how much it helps. Please don't jump into any cold bodies of water. Anyways, you're right. Just like its cousins, the salmon shark is endothermic. But what does that actually mean? What's the difference between animals that are endothermic and animals that are warm-blooded? If the Great White and Mako are also endothermic, why don't they also make it this far up north? The answer lies in how these animals maintain their body temperature. But first, let's go over some semantics. If you're warm-blooded, then congrats, you're also endothermic. If you're endothermic, you are able to have a body temperature higher than that of your environment, but you lack the ability to maintain a steady temperature. So how does that work? Well, to better understand this process, let's take a look at how the salmon shark manages to stay warm. Remember the last time you went to a gym? Me neither, but think back to the last time you had to exert some energy. You probably noticed that your body felt warm. When we use our muscles, they generate heat, and that heat plays a role in increasing our body temperature. Now, I don't know if you know this, but chasing salmon is quite the workout, which is why I prefer to work smarter, not harder. When salmon shark swims through the water, it generates heat. This warms up the blood vessels surrounding its muscles, and that heat gets dispersed through the body. But hold on a second. I'm pretty sure salmon sharks aren't the only animals in the ocean that can swim. If swimming generates heat, why aren't all animals that swim endothermic? The secret lies in the layout of their circulatory system. When animals with gills take in water, that cold water gets dispersed throughout their body and lowers their body temperature. However, for endothermic sharks, the blood vessels next to the gills are located next to the warmer blood vessels located by their muscles and organs. This increases the temperature of the blood being circulated through the body and helps them generate a body temperature higher than their surrounding environment. So then how does that differ from us? Easy, we don't have gills. But we also have a few extra mechanics. For example, when we get too hot, we sweat a little, which helps lower our body temperature. When we get cold, we might shiver to produce more heat. In addition to that, warm-blooded animals also have some metabolic responses that help them maintain stable temperatures. In short, if you're warm-blooded, your body temperature doesn't really change. For example, you guys stay at a constant 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, while the salmon shark has a wider range of body temperatures. Okay, so now that we know how the salmon shark is different from us, what makes them different from other endothermic sharks such as the Mako and Great White? If they all use the same system, then why don't we see those other sharks as far up north as we see the salmon shark? The answer is simple. Salmon sharks are better. Okay, okay, those other sharks have their own impressive bioengineering, but the simple fact is the salmon shark is able to maintain a body temperature higher than any other shark. If you're wondering why this is, then too bad. It has to do with protein exchange, and even I can't make microbiology entertaining. I have to rely on cuteness. Speaking of being cute, let's talk about the salmon shark's body. I've already talked about how it looks like a chubby little great white, and that might make some of you think of them as pet-sized versions of your favorite shark. But here's the thing, it's a lie. The salmon shark isn't small, the great white is just enormous. Even though it looks smaller by comparison, it still averages 2.4 meters or eight feet in length. I don't know about you, but if I'm in the water and an animal the length of a small car comes up to me, my first reaction isn't, aw, it's a little baby. I'm hightailing it out of there and heading to land where it's safe. In addition to its size, the salmon shark also has some unique adaptations that make it such an exceptional hunter. You've probably heard that the fastest shark in the world is the short fin mako. With its slender body and long pointy snout, this animal screams speed. Mako sharks can reach speeds up to 74 km per hour, much faster than its slower brother, the great white, who struggle to reach speeds up to 48 km per hour. For years, this animal has been the undisputed king of speed among sharks. Until today. Time to step aside, buddy! We have a new kid on the block. The salmon shark has been observed swimming at speeds reaching up to 88.5 km per hour, making it the new king of speed. Mako shark is still faster. What? Yep, I just checked. They've measured Mako's reaching speeds of around 96 km per hour. So, yeah, they're still number one. But that doesn't fit my narrative! Oh well, I guess we can talk about one of the other unique features that makes salmon shark such a fast swimmer. It's double keel. Awesome! I have no idea what that means. Hold on, I'm looking it up. Ah, here we go. Most sharks have a tail that looks like this. You can see how their body slopes towards their tail, creating a crease along its sides. This helps them cut through the drag and makes their bodies more hydrodynamic. It's sort of similar to how cars use curves to reduce air resistance. By having a keel along their tail, they're able to swim more efficiently through the water. And you know what? That's great. But you know what's better than one keel? Three keels? Why are you the way that you are? Unlike other sharks, salmon sharks have a secondary keel along the sides of their tail. 
This extra keel provides them with better stability and helps prevent them from drifting while swimming at high speeds. In addition to better overall hydrodynamic efficiency, this also helps to generate lift, which can come in pretty handy. I don't know if you've seen Salmon, but that's a pretty important adaptation. In fact, I'm surprised Discovery hasn't run a special on this yet. You would think a smaller, faster version with this incredible backdrop would glue people to their seats, but maybe they don't like being cold either. In addition to the double keel, Salmon Sharks also have a few other unique physical traits. The line that separates the darker skin at the top of their bodies from their white underbellies rests a little higher on the face. They also have these really stylish polka dots running along the sides of their body, which if you ask me, is pretty cool. We don't typically think of sharks as having polka dots. And trust me, these sharks needed that extra flair, because these babies are going on tour. Similar to the other species of sharks, salmon sharks undertake remarkably long migrations traveling thousands of miles across the North Pacific. In the summer, they like to hang out around the coast of Alaska and take advantage of the free buffet of salmon, making their annual journey to their freshwater spawning grounds. During the winter, salmon sharks head south to the warmer waters off the coast of California with some even making it as far as Japan. But why do they do this? If the goal is just to travel to warmer waters, why go on this international tour? The answer has to do with what we think these sharks are doing during their migration period. Close your eyes, kids. While we don't know where these animals go to breed, we do know that other species of shark will often travel long distances to reach their nurseries. This allows them to give birth to their pups in an environment with less competition and plenty of food. Aw, you're on your way, little guy. One day you'll be big and strong, just like your mama. Shark babies are fascinating, and I probably should have talked more about salmon shark babies given their unique gestation method, but unfortunately, we're out of time. So I guess we'll have to leave the story of the incredible world of shark babies for another video. Until then, I want to thank you all for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to bring snacks.